how do we study a religion? How do we approach Islam? What are the sources of Islam? Well, there's the Quran, there's the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, and then there's Hadith. These are the main three sources which we derive our knowledge, our information of Islam. But here's where we have to be very, very careful about how do we approach it. Let us take Quran to start with. Quran is not written like a novel or a newspaper article where the ideas have a flow and they create a, a sequence. The Quran was uh, revealed over 23 years at different occasions. So one verse would refer to war and then uh, there will be a subsequent verse referring to something else, issue of the day, and later you will feel another verse comes on war and subsequently another. So even if the Quran were organized chronologically, which it's not, you will not find the subjects organized, the, the verses organized by subject. That is not how it was revealed. The Quran is more, it's a recitation. It's to inspire. For example, it tells you to be honest. The Quran doesn't give you a definition of honesty. It doesn't explain honesty. It trusts you know innately what honesty is. So what the Quran tells you and why we need it is that it gives you the confidence that the other people in your society are also given the same message of honesty. And therefore you can be honest with the trust that others will complement that, will, will give you back that honesty that you are giving to them. This is where we have to understand the approach to the Quran. The Quran has a hierarchy. It has universal messages, like the Prophet in the first years in Mecca. He was not in power. He was a Prophet of Allah, a messenger, and he was giving us moral messages, messages which are universal, which are uh, admissible and usable in all societies, in all times, in all geographic areas. What are those? Honesty, justice, equality, mercy, compassion. These are messages which the Prophet gave to his followers. When he came to Medina, he became a lawmaker, he became a head of a state. That changes the situation where he had to deal with day-to-day -day activities to make decisions. Decisions on issues that had historic backgrounds, pre-Islamic backgrounds. The social society doesn't change, norms don't change overnight. You cannot make one day a statement that slavery is banned because we don't think slavery is right when the whole economy runs on slavery. So what you do is that you have to introduce step-by-step -step messages which actually move in that direction. So the Quran's hierarchy has to be understood that when you read the Quran, you recognize the universal messages, justice, equality, and then you recognize the time and culture sensitive messages, like the necklace story of Aisha. Aisha lost her necklace and then she was left behind in the caravan and a young man escorted her back. And that created embarrassment to the Prophet and there were insinuations that she was probably not faithful to him. And then the Quranic verse came and exonerated her. What is the message in this, in this story, in this verse? The importance that we have to take from this from the Quran is that Universal messages have a hierarchy, and we rec recognize those and take them as is. Justice, equality. Let us take an example. How do we draw laws out of these? When you have traffic laws, the traffic laws are not in the Quran, they're not in the Sunnah, they're not in the Hadith. What are the principles for traffic laws? Well, it is the same. Justice and equality. So when anybody, Muslim or no Muslim, derives or constitutes or writes a handbook for traffic, if it's based on justice and equality, that is our sharia, that is our law, that is in accordance with Islam. It doesn't matter who wrote it, it doesn't matter where it comes from. What matters is that it adheres to those principles, and those principles are Islamic. And that is the key that we have to understand, and we have to focus on these principles rather than the rituals. One of the problems that we saw in early Christianity or the, the start of Jesus, who was a Jew, what was his objection to the rabbis? His objection was that you have lost 
the real message of compassion, and love, and you are focused on rituals. And that is what Islam recognized and tells us what to do. Who is this Mullah of today who fills me with guilt, who drains me of confidence, who robs me of pleasure, who sends me to death? I have a brain to think. I have a heart for compassion. I have the book to read. I have science to explore. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no woman or man unequal. There is no human without dignity. I am no longer guilty. I am confident and proud. My faith is honesty. My creed is justice. My goal is equality. I am a free Muslim of today. Are you?